Cars and motorcycles of today are equipped with efficient manual or automatic transmissions. Often, transmission refers to a gearbox that uses gears to provide speed and torque conversions between input and output. First, let's have a quick look at the basic principle of transmissions. For that purpose, a very simple two-speed gearbox will be explained. Two gear wheels are machined into the output shaft. The other two wheels are mounted on a spline shaft. These two wheels can slide from left to right and from right to left to change gear ratio. In this example, the engine generates a rotational speed for the input shaft of 2000 rotations per minute. In first gear, the gear ratio is 2 because the driven gear is twice as big as the driver gear. Consequently, the input speed of 2000 rotations per minute is decreased to an output speed of 1000 rotations per minute. Shifting from first to second gear in this transmission is only possible when the engine stops. Then, shifting of gears is possible. In second gear, the input speed is increased because the gear ratio is 0.5. Because gear shifting is complicated for these kinds of transmissions, synchronized manual transmissions were developed that allow to easily select and deselect the gear, even when the vehicle moves. In modern cars, 5-speed or 6-speed transmissions are usually used. Here, however, a very simple explanation is given with the help of a 4-speed transmission. The input shaft is connected to the engine. The rotational energy of the input shaft is transferred to the counter shaft that transfers its energy to the gears of the output shaft. The output shaft is connected to the wheels of the vehicle. The power flow between input shaft and engine can be adjusted through a friction clutch. The gear wheels of the input shaft and the counter shaft are fixed to their shafts. They rotate when their corresponding shaft rotates. However, the gear wheels of the output shaft are not fixed to the shaft and can freely rotate. Locking a gear wheel to the output shaft is possible through a dock clutch. Here, a tooth system is fixed to the shaft. To shift from neutral into first gear, a part of the dock clutch slides sideways. But first, the friction clutch has to be disengaged, so that the engine does not transfer the mechanical energy produced to the transmission. The friction clutch can be engaged by the driver as soon as the dock clutch is fully engaged. Now, the energy produced by the engine is transmitted to the transmission. Then. The transmission transfers the energy through the counter shaft and the output shaft to the wheels, so the vehicle begins to move. When the driver wants to shift from first gear to second gear, he or she must disengage the friction clutch. Then the driver can shift gears without damaging the transmission. Here the tooth system of the second gear and the tooth system of the output shaft will be synchronized to correctly match the speed of the gear to that of the shaft as the gear is engaged. When the friction clutch is engaged by the driver, the energy is transferred to the transmission and, consequently, to the wheels of the vehicle. The same is true for shifting from second to third gear and from third to fourth gear. This type of transmission is often referred to as an H pattern because of the path that the shift lever takes as it selects the various gears. <laughs>